Okay, my friends, straight out of the chute, we are now joined by leading Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump is back on with us. Uh, Mr. Trump, thank you so much for coming on the Cooner Report. Hi, Jeff. I love your opening where you say, taking our country back. That's what it's all about. Take our country back. I love that, Jeff. <laughs> I know that wasn't for me, but I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Trump, I know you've got a big event tonight in Worcester. You're going to be appearing at the DCU Center uh, right. in Worcester. The event begins at 7 p.m. Doors will right. open at 5. Uh, we're, by the way, I've been speaking with your people we're going to be holding a major town hall with you probably in early December. Great. Uh, University of New Hampshire. We're looking at 7,000, 7,500 people. Good. It's going to be packed. Uh, Mr. Trump, there's a lot I want to ask you, but right away, the Syrian refugees. Obama wants to resettle at least 10,000. There are now reports from Investor, Investors Business Daily. It's really 15,000. Yeah. And now reports are coming out. We don't get to pick these refugees. Right. Apparently the UN picks them. Yeah. In cooperation with the Organization uh, for Islamic Cooperation, right. which is a Saudi-based group tied to the radical Muslim Brotherhood. So right. in other words, the UN and Islamists are going to be picking the refugees right. that we're going to be admitting to this country. Right. Should we allow know, Saudi, these refugees? Saudi takes nothing. You do know that. They take nothing. Okay, so just to set the record totally clear, they take nothing. We take. And the number of 10,000, Jeff, in my opinion, is nothing compared to what the real number is, because I've heard they want to bring in, Obama wants to bring in 250,000, and that's going to be next. You'll see it step by step. And even in the debate, in the Democratic debate the other day, they talked about 65,000. So, you know, I don't know how it's now 10, but I think the number is going to be 250,000 by the time they finish. And we are insane to allow it to happen. Insane. Mr. Trump, what do you say to the president's argument, really taunting you, taunting other Republicans, you're afraid of widows and orphans and old men, that we have nothing to fear, that these refugees are being thoroughly vetted, and that this would be a betrayal of our values, that the terrorists, in a sense, will have won if we don't allow these refugees to come in? Well, we have an incompetent president who probably, I don't know if he really believes this whole act, but we have a man that is just grossly incompetent. You saw that the other day with his speech, which was talked about all over the world. He, he was angry at the reporters and the Republicans. He wasn't angry at the people that did the shooting in Paris, but he was more angry at the reporters than the Republicans, and the level of vitriol was incredible. So we shouldn't allow it to happen for a lot of reasons. Number one, you just said one of the reasons. They're not even screened by us to the full extent. They're screened, and I guarantee you, we get the least of the package. You have going into other countries. We will, as usual, end up getting the bad end of the stick. But more importantly than anything is that you have all of these people coming in. We have no papers. There are no papers. They don't have any paperwork with them. They don't have any documentation. It's all gone. It's all, if it ever existed to start off with, it's blown up or whatever happened to it. We have no idea who these people are. And you could have ISIS infiltrated. And one of the things I've been saying for two weeks, three weeks, I look at the migration I say, where are the women? Where are the children? And you've probably seen it on television. I mean, I'm looking at a migration where it's all like young men that are strong-looking guys. They look like young soldiers. This could be one of the great Trojan horses of all time, and it probably isn't, but this could be a Trojan horse. But, you know, Jeff, even if 10 came in, look at the damage a few of them did in Paris, right? You know, even if a few came in under the guise of coming in through the migration, so... For Obama to be approving this is a disgrace. What we should do is build a safe with everybody else, with the Gulf states and everybody else. They have a lot more money than our country, as we're a debtor nation right now. But we should have a big swatch of land in Syria, build a free zone until they can go back eventually when this whole mess is over. Maybe they can go back to where they, they want to be anyway, in their own areas. But we should build a free zone from a humanitarian. You know, we should do it along with many other countries. Look at what's happening, Jeff, to Germany. I mean, they've destroyed. She has destroyed Germany by allowing this to happen. The people, I have friends in Germany, 
they're calling me up. They say we're going to get out of Germany. They can't believe how bad it is, how 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 horrible it is. And by the way, the crime and everything else is through the roof. So where they didn't have a problem before. So uh, for Obama to want to do this, and of course, you know, add that to the fact that the southern border is totally opened up. And you know, I've been the biggest proponent of that, and uh, you know, building the wall. We're going to build a wall, and Mexico is going to pay for the wall. These politicians, they laugh when I say that because they think. Believe me, Mexico will pay. We lose. We have a, a trade imbalance of forty-five billion dollars a year with Mexico. The wall is peanuts compared to that. We have all the power. Mexico will pay for the wall. You mark it down, Jeff. Um, Donald, if you were president of the United States, right? Would you be joining Russia and France? They've now essentially formed an alliance to smash right. ISIS in Syria. Yeah, I would do that. And I I was in favor of that before. See, we have a problem. There's a conflict of interest because we have an incompetent president. Our president wants to knock out Assad. Assad's a bad guy, but they're all bad guys. Our president wants to knock out Assad. And because of that, you know, this whole migration started. If that thing could have been solved a long time ago, you wouldn't have had the migration. It, it would have been probably you wouldn't have had it at all. So he wants to. Russia likes Assad. Others like Assad. He doesn't like Assad. So we're back in rebels that we don't even know, Jeff, who they are. Okay? We don't even know who they are. They could be worse than Assad. Assad's a bad guy, but they could be much worse. And you saw that with Libya. Look at Libya now without Gaddafi. Look at, look at what's going on with Iraq. Look at everything we do is... Bad. Everything we do is just wrong. Should have never gone into Iraq, but then we shouldn't have gotten out the way Obama wanted to get out. You know, he, he announces a date, so the enemy just hides until that date, and then they go over and do all sorts of destruction. He announces 50 men going over there last week. Instead of just letting them go, he announces it, and now they have a target on their chest. Everyone's looking for him over there to try and kill him instead of just letting them go and stop, stopping with the publicity. So everything we do is wrong. The answer is if uh, we have to get rid of ISIS. They're bad. They're really bad. We're going to get rid of ISIS. But if Russia wants to do it and if France wants to do it and if other countries wants to do it, I'm all for it. And I think you are too probably, Jeff, in all fairness. We, we have to get rid of These guys are bad. And they're evil. They're evil. And we're building them up too much. You know, I see this, this wacky guy. I see this guy, and they're calling him a mastermind. They shouldn't call him a mastermind. They should say he's a nut job. Okay, they shouldn't call him a mess. All the networks are calling him a mastermind. You know, the one that they think was the behind the, the Paris attack. Behind the Paris attack, and they're showing this guy looks like looks like ten cents. They're showing this guy he's a mastermind. The mastermind behind the attack. What's the mastermind? Guys walked into rooms and they started shooting people. Is that a mastermind? I don't think so. And most of them were shot and killed ultimately. But you know, interesting. And just to finish off, the the they walk into a room. A lot of people in those various rooms, nobody has a gun because Paris and France has the strongest gun laws in the world, practically. You know, you can't have a gun. So nobody had a gun. The only one that had the guns are the bad guys. So they were just shooting people next, next. Just people were totally defenseless. If you had a guy like you or me or some other guys in that room that had guns, it wouldn't have been that way, Jeff. You know, wouldn't have been that way. So. It's a very, very sad thing that happened. So I'm a big Second Amendment person, and that's one of the reasons they like me in New Hampshire. I'm a Second Amendment person, big league. Uh, Mr. Trump, uh, again, you're in the White House. You're President Trump. What would right. you do? The FBI has said there's nine uh, ongoing investigations of 900 cases involving right. ISIS. They're in all 50 states. What would you do to deal with ISIS that has infiltrated our homeland? Would you surveil mosques? And would you start closing down some of these radical mosques? I would look ser very seriously at the mosques. I've said it over the last three days. Took a little heat. I don't care. Let them give me some heat. I mean, these people, there's some evil stuff happening in those mosques. And there's some evil ideas coming out. And whether Obama wants to say it or not, and he doesn't want to say it, he won't say radical Islamic terrorism. He won't even use the term. It's, it's like, you know, he thinks they're coming from Sweden or something. Uh, it is so horrible that he won't even use the term. And if you don't use the term, you're not going to solve the problem. He, he, I don't even think he knows the problem. I don't think he, he's truly a man that doesn't have any clue. He doesn't know what he's doing. We've got to get him out so fast. And we can't have Hillary. She doesn't have the, she doesn't have the mojo. She doesn't have the strength. She doesn't have the stamina to be president. She doesn't have the stamina. I mean, I, the look, I know her. I know, I know sort of everybody. Hillary does not have the strength or the stamina to be president, and, and she doesn't have the, the ideas. You know, she also will not say the term radical Islamic terrorists or terrorism. 
and we have to do something very strong. As far as that, as far as the FBI is concerned, uh, number one, when they go to fight for ISIS, we let them back in the country because we're stupid, okay? Uh, under no circumstances can they come back into the country. They go to fight for ISIS, they're gone. They're gone. That's number one. Number two, I think most of the people that are uh, being investigated, probably most of them are guilty. I'd be very, very strong, and I'd be very fast and swift, because most of those people, I guarantee you, are guilty. There's tremendous hatred going on, tremendous hatred, and there's a lot of danger, and I would be very strong. The FBI is terrific. I'd be very strong. We don't have enough people. The problem is we don't have enough people to look at all the people. But can you imagine, Jeff, they go to fight for ISIS, and we allow them to come back with a passport into our country again? Well, Mr. Trump, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think you're kind of building up to something, and I just want you to address this. Go ahead. Everything you're saying is 100% right. You have a president who essentially helped armed ISIS through Benghazi. Correct. You have a president who helped topple Gaddafi, unstable the mid- uh, made the Middle East completely unstable, supported the right. Arab Spring. Okay. In many ways, all of this refugee crisis is his doing. He calls ISIS the JV team. He doesn't right. have a strategy to deal with it. Right. Now he's resettling uh, predominantly Muslim refugees, which we think ISIS has infiltrated their ranks. Is this president too incompetent to remain in the Oval Office? Should well, he incompetent. resign? Don't forget, he said ISIS is contained. And the following day, they, they did unbelievable damage to a country. You know, the 360 people that are in the hospital, many of them are going to die, too, by the way. You know, that's so in addition to all the people that died. And then you have the airliner that that went down, which was a Russian airliner. That's why I said a number of weeks ago, if Russia wants to hit ISIS, let them hit. Everyone said, oh, they won't hit ISIS. Well, they're going to hit ISIS because ISIS knocked down one of their airliners because they're enemies. So they're going to hit ISIS and they're going to hit them hard. And they've been, by the way. They have really been hitting them hard now. You've seen what's happened over the last couple. You know, one thing with Putin, when he hits, he hits. It's not like our guy. But Putin has their biggest bombers. They're bombing the hell out of them right now. But we have a president that doesn't have a clue. We have a president that said ISIS is contained, Jeff. And it, can you believe that statement? He's dead contained. Is, is he a threat to national security? Threat. Mr. Trump, is, is, is Obama now a threat to America's national security? I think he's a threat to our country. I mean, he must have some kind of a thing going because, you know, when you see that he won't even call them by their name, after attack after attack after attack, and it's always the same thing, it's hatred. It's hatred. And it is exactly that. It's radical Islamic terrorism. And he won't even acknowledge it. It's like they're coming out of uh, Denmark or something. You know, it's, it's the whole thing is ridiculous. He won't acknowledge it. And Hillary Clinton's afa- afraid to acknowledge it because, you know, she's just living on a, a, you know, she's living on a dream. Hillary has a real problem because she's got the email problem. And, you know, Bernie Sanders is not, he doesn't have a chance. He's, a, he, he's become a joke. When he, when he gave up the emails in the debate, previous debate, the, he gave up his whole his whole chance against her when he said, you know, in order to get a good 20 second soundbite, he got a soundbite that lasted 20 seconds with a 10 second applause. And he gave up. He just, in my opinion, he gave up the race. And the other guy, O'Malley, he was the mayor of Baltimore. And you see what happened to Baltimore. Okay. You know, this guy was the mayor of Baltimore. He was a terrible mayor. He was a lousy governor. And, you know, he shouldn't even be allowed on the stage. It's like some, in all fairness, some of the folks that are on our Republican stage we could do without. I see Bobby Jindal just got out. And uh, you'll have others getting and A lot of others will get out pretty soon, I guess, Jeff. Because it would be good to have a, you know, a more serious group of contenders up there. I think it would be good. You'd more time to express your views, not 30-second sound bites every, uh, every 10 minutes. Uh, Mr. So, Trump, final question. I know you're yes. up against it. You have to go. Never but... for you, Jeff. You've always <laughs> been so good to me, and I appreciate it. So I'm never up against it for you. Just remember that. Oh, thank you. Secretary of State John, uh, John Kerry, Jean-Francois, right. has now said that the Charlie Hebdo terrorist attacks were understandable in his view. Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, more of the same. Look, this is the same man that gave us the Iran deal, one of the worst deals ever negotiated of any kind. They get $150 billion. They can self-police. They have 24 days. We don't even get back our prisoners. He gave us that deal. Anything he says, I mean, you know, what do you expect him to say? 
he's made one of the worst deals, one of the most catastrophic deals in history. To give back 150, one of the biggest problems I have, you know, if I win, one of the things that's going to be most upsetting is they will already have the money. Because I'll do a big number on them. Believe me, I, that's what I do. I, I will, I'm very good with contracts. I, I buy bad contracts and make them good. But and it's a terrible contract. But there's always a little sentence that somebody made a mistake on. You know, there's always something in a contract where you can hang your hat. But but the biggest problem is the money will already be gone. One hundred and fifty billion dollars. He's given that to Iran, a terror state, and you know what they've been doing. And they so they're supplying weapons to kill our people, to kill our our beautiful boys and 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 women. That they they you know they spend tremendous amounts of money all over the all over all over the place. To kill our people, and we're giving them 150. So Kerry did that deal, and he ought to be ashamed of himself. And his statement, which has certainly gotten a lot of press, and you're bringing it up again, was a statement, you know, said by a man that is uh, obviously a terrible Secretary of State. We have been talking with leading front runner Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. He will be tonight in Worcester at the DCU Center. The event kicks off at 7 p.m. Doors will open at 5 p.m. We're going to be having our own town hall with Mr. Trump probably in the next couple of weeks. Great. Donald, thank you so much for coming on the Cooner Report. Cooner thank Country you, loves you. Well, we have a we have a big crowd there tonight. Up there. It's going to be very exciting. We're going to have a great time considering the subject matter is not so great. You understand that. But I we're understand. going to make it terrific, and we're going to have a fantastic time tonight. So I will see you soon. I look forward to doing that with you, and tonight's going to be very exciting up there. God bless you. Knock him dead, Donald. I will. Thanks Take so care. Much, Take care. Thank Bye. you so much.